Twelve of 26-year-old Jill Parkman's close friends remained seated on either side of her at a long table. A diffused lamp softly illuminated the guest of honor sitting at the head of the table. The bride's twelve closest friends remained seated to her left and right. They were in a private room at a women's club in Boston called Adonis Paradise. This place masqueraded as a sophisticated establishment, and its calling card was the handsome men, male dancers who entertained the female audience. The music was blasting, the lights were dimmed, and two dancers were dancing on the table, entertaining the twelve ladies at the table. The last call for alcohol interrupted the music momentarily at 2 a.m., but all twelve were drunk and tired and did not want to call it a night. The dancers continued their performance, interrupted by the public address system. Waiters came in and out of the room taking orders for drinks and appetizers, and no one paid any attention to the Spanish-speaking woman who periodically came in and out of the room. One of the dancers, however, had his eyes on the stunning bride, Jill Parkman, all evening. In her not entirely clear state, she also could not take her eyes off the eyes of the Adnis dancer. This strikingly handsome guy had a practiced stellar seductive smile. He then moved his sarong headband a little to the side and crouched down in front of Jill so that the bride could clearly see his gigantic dignity. She felt wave after wave of desire as sweat beaded on her body in the cool room, looking at him. Immediately behind him, his partner danced back to back, facing the wedding party of the remaining eleven supporters, completing his dance. Luckily, the second dancer behind Adonis blocked the view between Jill and her favorite dancer. After nervously looking around and checking that her eleven friends seemed captivated by the second dancer, Jill leaned forward and grabbed him below the waist and began to pleasure him. But after a few seconds of pleasure, she realized what a terrible act she was committing five days before her wedding. She stepped back from the table, horrified, and stifled a scream at what she had done. She stood up straight when the last song ended and the music died down. Jill then saw a woman whom she had previously mistook for a waitress leaving through the emergency exit on the right, leaving a private room probably into an alley. Then the alarm sounded because the intruder had opened the fire door. Jill's first thought was, Did someone take a video of me licking this dancer? Why? The lights turned on and Jill tried to smile and relax. At the same time, both dancers also relaxed, jumped off the table and shook each hand, saying goodbye and inviting them to come again, before leaving the room to count their tips. Jill Parkman was a classic mid-twenties beauty. After graduating from high school in Switzerland, she attended a renowned women's college in the Boston area. There, she met dozens of beautiful, multilingual, and well-dressed women on campus, yet her classmates still chose her as their favorite. Her father made his money in real estate development, and Jill had worked for his large organization since she received her MBA. She and her fiancé, Richard Black, have lived in a luxury apartment overlooking the Boston Public Gardens for the past two years. After a few goodbye hugs, four of the twelve ladies got into the bridesmaid's car after the janitor delivered the car to them. The designated driver provided a tip and then, along with another relatively sober friend from the wedding party, helped the two almost passed out passengers into the car. Jill slumped in the back seat, sobbing desperately in her drunken state. There was no coherent speech other than the guest of honor continuing to ask anyone, Why did I do that? until her sobs grew louder and louder as the car sped through the deserted streets of Boston in the early morning hours. The mostly sober friend in the back seat repeatedly asked, What did you do, Jill? We're all friends here, and you can tell us everything. Jill's crying had diminished to a constant moan by the time the driver helped the first drunk girl into her apartment and into bed. She had to repeat the process at Jill's apartment when finally the groom was completely lost in a drunken sleep. In the luxury apartment's guest parking lot, Barbara, the bridesmaid who was the designated driver, gently patted Jill's cheeks, trying to wake her up. After the friend came, the driver asked, Should I wake up Richard and ask him to help you upstairs and into bed? There was silence for a moment, and Jill finally blew her nose. She replied, 
Richard is in Manhattan meeting with the CEO of five stores there. That's the only reason I got drunk like a sailor. I'm so embarrassed. Why, Jill, I was sitting to your right, and all I saw was you having fun, except for the way you kept ordering drinks when you should have stopped. Jill responded with greater lucidity. I'm glad you saw me having a good time, because I don't remember that. Well, Barb, that dancer who spent most of the evening in front of me got under my skin. I, I could fall in love with this guy, and I'm sure he fell in love with me, not just because I'm a beautiful woman and he's a dancer. Am I crazy? Barbara laughed and said, No, I thought he was damn attractive too, but lusting after a dancer isn't your style, considering you work every day. It was a passing fancy, and we all had a great time. Forget about it and think about your wedding. Look at it this way. We all had a laugh and met up with old friends, some of whom we haven't seen since university. Relax and let me help you up the stairs. As Barbara supported Jill as she walked through the lobby of the luxury high-rise in silence, Jill thought, Those girls would have attacked me with public shaming if I had done this, so I probably didn't do this thing, but just really wanted it. And now I think this happened. Barb said, just a few more steps, Jill. Jill said goodbye to her designated driver and best friend and finally lay down in the silk sheets alone with her thoughts in Richard and her luxurious bedroom. Twice she almost lost consciousness, falling asleep, but suddenly raised her hand to grab the dignity of the man she clearly saw in her imagination. Jill even reached her hand into the air, trying to grab it again, but soon the completely confused bride realized that it was only in her imagination. Then she sat up in bed and said out loud to no one, Damn it! This really happened, and my wedding party just didn't see it. But maybe that Hispanic woman took a photo of it and will blackmail me. Why else would she choose this moment to leave out of the club through the fire exit? Oh, damn. Should I tell Richard? Yeah, it was nothing, and he'll probably think it was nothing in the grand scheme of what's going on in our lives now. Richard Black studied the income and expense reports of his Manhattan barbershops as the charter flight headed from LaGuardia to Logan. As soon as the plane landed, he turned off airplane mode on his iPhone, and the first thing he noticed was a text message from the private investigator he'd hired to spy on his fiancée's bachelorette party. His first reaction was a feeling of alarm that she had written it all and at the same time irritation. The message read, We need to talk. I'll meet you at the boarding area near baggage claim. BR. As Richard headed toward the ground transportation meeting point, he thought, Jill has a wandering eye and is sizing up every man she meets perhaps as a potential lover. I felt the need to find out what she would do once I was comfortably in Manhattan, while she's having fun with the mostly bitches she hangs out with frequently. I have serious doubts about our upcoming marriage. I shouldn't have let her talk me into setting a date last year. Yes, she's rich with her dad's money, but I already have enough of mine money, and I don't need her inheritance money, although she may have finally realized that she was wasting her youth working in the relaxed job her father created for her. He recognized a single Hispanic woman whom Richard vaguely remembered as the private detective he had hired. She was waiting for him at the baggage claim counter and approached her. The woman said, without saying hello and with a let's get to the point look on her face, let's get straight to the point, Mr. Black. She turned on her iPhone Plus and showed the finale of the male dancer's dance, showing Richard's fiancé dreamily satisfying the dancer. After the short clip, she continued, I arrived at Adonis Paradise around midnight and went in and out of the private party room several times. I went undetected because the partygoers thought I was staff and none of the main club employees paid any attention to me. Everyone thought that I was a hired temporary worker to serve the crowded evening. After he found his voice, the designated groom asked, When was this video filmed? She replied, Last call sounded and a wild rock tune was playing and the two dancers on the table stopped and then finished their performance and I recorded the last two minutes of the performance of whoever danced the most in front of him is. Parkman. She was very drunk 
and would have fallen out of her chair during the evening if she had been sitting on a chair without strong arms. But several dancers came in and out of the private room for two hours. Your lady barely noticed the stream of dancers on the table until this particular dancer was performing. She then ignored her friends and intently watched this very sexy dancer. I noticed this the first two times he danced, and then again at closing time. The rest of the time she was chatting with her dozen friends at the big table. My guess is that she wasn't sexually aroused with the other dancers, but was very aroused by this particular one, pointing to a photo of him on the device. She continued, I watched as her friends helped her into a car, which was driven by a janitor at the entrance to the club later, and the four women drove off. Richard took a deep breath and asked, Thank you. Do I owe you more money? She replied, No. I wrote a check for a refund of the unused portion of your deposit, and the video clip you saw is attached to the email I sent earlier. I wish my news was better, but we live in the real world anyway. Cool. Richard and the private investigator boarded a waiting commercial vehicle for South Station, where he would drop her off at her request. They broke up. Richard Black received a bachelor's degree in business administration from Boston University. He then borrowed money from his father and traveled to the south of France to study facial beauty and fashionable hairstyles with the most prestigious stylists and beauty experts in the world. Not only was Black tall, dark, and handsome, but he also had a talent for making the inconspicuous models hired by the Institute for their ordinary looks strikingly beautiful. After a session in his chair, they looked amazingly beautiful. Even when Richard was a student, in fact, hired models often queued up to be the subject of his lessons. After graduating two years later, he returned to Boston and opened his own salon on Newberry Street. At first, business was slow and he was losing money, but his mom and dad supported him. After being published in a local glossy magazine and thanks to recommendations, the business began to take off and, as they say, the rest is history. Today, Richard was comfortable, although far from rich, and eventually sought to expand his business by opening a consignment warehouse and a fourth retail location four or five stores in the Tyson's Corner, Virginia area. That evening, Richard sat in the back seat of a car as it pulled away from South Station with an aching heart. He thought, we were supposed to fly to the Caribbean on Friday for a big wedding. Her father and mother insisted on this luxurious wedding and covered all expenses, even transportation and accommodation for friends at the resort. He closed his eyes and thought back to his life with Jill Parkman over the past two plus years. Helen of Troy Incarnate was one of his earliest regular customers at his first store on Newberry Street. Richard was first fascinated by her because he could make her so beautiful that one day she literally stopped traffic on a famous street, but then he looked at her only as an artist looks at a model. Over time, she persuaded him to meet her for drinks on Sunday, his only day off. Richard walked into the bar and noticed two guys trying to buy Jill a drink while she was waiting for him. That day she was wearing an outfit from Neiman's that he had seen earlier and Richard had just done her hair the day before, and for the first time he felt sexually attracted to her, even though she was his client. Black had a sex life, but his partners were never his clients he constantly reminded himself. Whoever strives for success in this business simply does not sleep with clients. He then walked over to Jill's table, smiling, and she said, Richard, I'm so glad you're here, I couldn't convince these gentlemen that I was expecting someone. Turning to them, she said, Excuse us now, guys. They reluctantly left. Richard asked Jill, If I was five minutes late, would you leave me? Never. I admit, I put up with them because I can't stand being alone in a bar, especially while waiting for a date. The man replied, Well, I have to say, you look deathly charming this afternoon and made me break my first rule and look at you with desire. She smiled like a spider and said, I hope you mean sexual desire. To put it bluntly, yes. She replied, Since you have finally admitted that you want me, although you do not dare, as you put it, to go to bed with clients. Well, Jill, 
You know I have plans to expand my business, and I need to stay focused. And that means I can't risk having an affair with a client. Jill took a sip of her vodka martini and said, I understand. I must say, your professional narrow-mindedness is impressive. Well, anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. She saw how her interlocutor opened his arms, inviting him to talk, and continued, They say that a woman should be able to trust her hairdresser with her darkest and deepest secrets, and here is the last secret that you know nothing about. So, Richard, why can't I find the right man in my life? Especially after numerous adjustments and dating arranged by expensive, reputable agencies in order to find me a suitable and desirable gentleman. Richard was afraid to say anything for a moment, thinking about having a good relationship with clients, but finally said, Well, I couldn't find the right woman myself, so perhaps I am not the right person to answer this question, or perhaps such a person simply does not exist for us. Jill seemed a little offended, but she didn't say anything, so he continued, But I live by my principle, I plan my work and work according to the plan, and then Miss Charming will appear in my life. Then the players who are hindering me now and yesterday will become a distant memory. She said, I understand. Your plan is to grow your business, and along the way, you and Miss Beautiful will find each other and prosper while living together. Richard said, Yes, exactly. So, without wanting to talk about the 800-pound personal gorilla in her life, what do you really want to do, Jill? I wish I knew. My father and his brother worked 18-hour days as they purchased, built, and renovated commercial and residential properties. By the time I received my MBA, my two brothers had become successful and wealthy, and it seemed natural for me to take a job with their company and move into one of their buildings, where I now live and manage the complex. So I fill my day with a landlord's worries, which is important, but they could hire someone else to do it for a lot less money but then I don't know what I want for my life to be meaningful. I have some money since half of my income is free money, but not enough to get involved in a new startup. I also have too much money to look for a challenge in work. So this is an open question, but I definitely want to do something. I just don't know what although you gave me some ideas today. Thank you, Richard. Good luck to both of us, Jill, as I am looking for a successful hairdresser with business acumen to run my shops in the Berkshires. Jill and Richard's meetings continued for three more Sundays, after which Jill disappeared from Richard's life. She no longer made an appointment with the stylist who ran his shop on Newberry, and vanity or protocol prevented him from calling her. The lonely barber businessman even went to the same hotel bar, when he was in town at the time they always met on Sundays. His secret hope was that she would appear there, but the diva never showed up. A month later, Richard gave up, realizing that he would never meet Jill again. A year after he stopped making his last fruitless trips to a five-star bar on Sundays, Richard drove from the airport to his apartment late at night. He was tired and frustrated wondering who could replace his zone manager at Saratoga. As he got out of the car, he noticed a new sign at the entrance to the high-rise building where he lived that read, Welcome to the newest addition to Sunrise Properties. But real estate transactions happen thousands of times every day, and such an event could not immediately affect the tenants, so Richard did not pay much attention to it. He opened the door to his apartment and began dictating an order for food delivery. After he finished the grocery list and gave his credit card number, an arm reached around him from behind, snatched his phone and said, Operator, please make these two orders instead of one. She then handed the device back to him, smiling. He turned around and stared straight at Jill Parkman. She put a finger to his lips and said, If you're wondering why and how I'm here, meet your new building manager. My father and uncle's company bought this building while you were away, and I have every right to be here because I am your new superintendent. I came by this evening because two days ago your housekeeper said that you should come back today. I haven't moved into this building yet, and I took the opportunity to shower in your bathroom if you're wondering why I'm wearing your robe. Richard was dumbfounded and fell into his rocking chair, 
not taking his eyes off Jill. He felt mixed feelings of joy at meeting her, and at the same time hostility that she had disappeared from his life and suddenly returned without warning after a year of absence. He finally found his voice and said, Whoever is doing your hair now is definitely qualified to make you look great. She said, Oh, I still go to your store on Newberry Street, but I signed up under a different name, and my stylist is Melissa. Understand. Thanks for being my client anyway, Jill. But what are you doing here now in my apartment? She laughed cheerfully and said, I wanted to tell you that I love you madly and try to seduce you again. I think you love me but don't want to admit it because I'm still your client. So as far as you're concerned, I'm no longer sitting in your chair at the store because I'm Melissa's client now. Richard said, I don't believe you'd want to spend time with me, Jill, because I'm a man who's committed to only one woman. Uh, philosophers call me a serial polygamist because I don't share or I change partners for better or worse. Jill was amazed by his short precise answer and fully understood the complex sentence he had just uttered. She said, Richard, seriously, I've never stopped loving you and have spent the last year learning every aspect of Sunrise Properties operations even representing the company in court once. For example, for the first time in my career, I work hard and I'm focused when I'm not thinking about you, and I am saving money under your influence, and over time I will launch my own business. Another reason for all this work is that I hope you're still in love with me. Now that the confused Jill is starting to get her life back on track, I've almost figured out what I want to do with my life and you're part of it. Richard was amazed by her 180-degree change. At that moment the food arrived and they sat down to dinner, continuing to talk about their past years. Richard said, Business is good, and I expect first profits from the Saratoga operation in the next quarter. It was difficult for him to continue eating because Richard really wanted to hug Jill, since his male hormones were literally going through the roof, and he knew that she was not wearing anything under his robe. She said, Sunrise Properties is growing, and I need a building manager for the 48 apartments that I am still trying to manage, even moving between two buildings. But more than that, I need you to hold me at night so that I no longer wake up screaming alone. He said, Hold that thought while I take a shower and brush my teeth, okay? When Richard returned from the shower, wearing only his underpants, Jill stood in front of him already naked. The hairdresser was unsteady on his feet and grabbed the floor lamp for support. He smiled and said, I always guessed you were a ten under your designer clothes but my goodness, you're amazing. Their joint makeup and first sexual relationship exhausted both of them. They rolled on the thickly carpeted floor, and both did not want to let each other go even later. When nature called, Jill looked at him and said, I don't know how I'll work tomorrow because my arms will still be around you. Oh, thank you, Richard, for coming into my life. Over the next year, both of their lives were filled with delight. Jill agreed to share Richard's apartment at his invitation. The next change came on their first anniversary together. Jill asked, Can we get married, Richard, because I want a baby? He was a little shocked and thought, although she was making some progress in her career, she was still mostly just floundering. Richard said, A baby would be a joy in our lives, I think, but we wouldn't put our fortunes together because I have no fortune. Just a lot of debt did your mom and dad give you that idea. Yes, my parents would like to have a grandson, since they are already over 50. You don't need to have a huge fortune, but you will need to agree not to try to take my or our child's fortune in the future if you change your mind about us. Two days after Jill's bachelorette party, a driver parked his car in front of Richard Black's building, trying to get the attention of the stunned gentleman we're here, sir. Walking into his empty apartment, he saw Jill's clothes scattered on the floor and thought, it's strange that I never noticed that she leaves her dirty clothes on the floor for someone else to pick them up. Ladies don't do that. In the kitchen, he found a sink full of dirty dishes because the cleaning lady was supposed to come in the morning and she could at least load the dishwasher. He watched the video clip again.
attached to the email from the private investigator, which he read on his iPhone. Then he remembered. I kept this apartment spotlessly clean before Jill moved in with me. Now look at this. We are different people. Assuming she doesn't have an uncontrollable urge to keep pleasing other people's men, how long will it be before we're screaming at each other because we're different people? No, I'm not going to continue with this crazy marriage. That's when the front door opened with a key and Jill burst in, throwing herself into the arms of her significant other standing at the kitchen sink. She tried to hug him and said, Oh, darling, why didn't you call me as soon as you landed and I would have come right over and tidied up the apartment before you got home? He blocked her attempt to hug him and said, Jill, let's go to my desk and talk. Reaching his desk, he pulled out his airline ticket to a wedding in St. Kitts that Friday. After he handed her the ticket, he said, Your father can get a refund on my ticket because I won't be participating in the wedding ceremony. Jill let out a high-pitched scream and fell to the floor. Richard brought a damp cloth and a glass of water and finally sobered her up. She tearfully asked him, Which of my friends told you that I did something that a bride shouldn't do? The man she was madly in love with suddenly ignored her question but said, We're too different and our marriage won't work, Jill. Think about us. We never had to get married to have a child. I really love you madly, and it will take me many months for this to pass. But nevertheless, we should not be together. We're different people, Jill. She was depressed now and wiped away her tears, finally saying, What will happen now, Richard? He replied, Well, I have a lease on this apartment that doesn't expire for another ten months. You can move into any of the free blocks in this building, and I will help you if you wish. But we just shouldn't be together after all this. His ex fiance paused for a moment to consider the situation. Richard cannot know about my misdeed with the dancer. What's happening? Why did he change so much? Why is he different now than he was when he left? Should I tell him what I did in my drunken stupor? Will this change anything for him? She said, Darling, my poor dad and uncle spent a lot of money on this holiday, which now cannot be cancelled. So please tell them you're not going to marry me, and why aren't you going on this Caribbean wedding adventure? Jill, you know the reasons better than I do, and rest assured, I haven't changed at all, except to realize that getting married would be a mistake for both of us. Something made you change your mind, Richard, even if you won't tell me what it was. Wait a minute. If something had made me change my mind, you would have known better than I what it was. So I suggest you tell your father the whole truth in your own words and let everything work out as it turns out. Anyway, I need to pack my bag for the night and check into a hotel for a day or two while you pack your things. Richard went into the kitchen, leaving Jill cowered on the floor crying loudly. Harry Parkman was a thin and graying middle-aged man. He sat at his desk, reading the income and expense reports for each of Sunrise Properties' eight properties. Wrinkles appeared on his cheeks and forehead as he frowned as he read the detailed reports. He wrote a note in pencil and said to himself, I'm desperate for a competent manager there since that lazy Gibbons is playing games by watching the clock until his retirement. So what to do? He put it aside when his secretary said over the speakerphone, Your daughter is coming to your office. Jill walked into the spacious, well-decorated office and placed Richard's airline ticket on his desk in front of him without even saying hello. She began to cry and said, Richard will not marry me and will not take advantage of your generosity to fly to St. Kitts with us. Moreover, he asked me to move out of his apartment. Her father said, Wait a minute, Jill dear. He pressed the speakerphone button and said, Find out when my lawyer can come see me. Turning to his daughter, he asked, What caused this, dear? He didn't just wake up and stop loving you. Start from the moment he said goodbye the last time he left. Fine. It was a passionate moment in the morning and Richard asked the commercial driver to wait until we were finished so he could walk out the door. And then that night was my bachelorette party, which started at ten. She paused for a moment, crying, and then continued. 
Two male dancers entertained 18 of us non-stop at first, and by closing time there were 12 left. A stream of dancers performed almost naked on the table in front of us, while cheap, tinny music hammered our eardrums. We continued to order drinks at the bar. As usual, Dad, I drank too much. A smile appeared on Harry's face, remembering his youth, and he asked, Didn't you grab the dancer by his gear? Jill laid her head on her father's desk and cried, saying, Moreover, I began to satisfy him just for the moment when he sat down in front of me so that others would not see. Harry suddenly stood up and shouted, What did you do? A paid gigolo dancing for dinner? Of course, one of your friends saw everything and told Richard. No, the other girls were focused on the second dancer and didn't see me squatting between his legs. I was drunk, Dad, and it didn't mean anything. Did you tell Richard the next time you saw him? No, Dad, if I don't confess, then it didn't happen, and he should accept me for who I am, no matter what. My dear daughter, Jill, were you instilled with such absurd thinking at Swiss boarding school? You certainly couldn't have inherited it from your mother or me. Harry pressed the call button and said, Tell my lawyer he doesn't need to come to me. He stroked her head as it lay on the table and added, Go back to work and break things off with Richard like a pro. He's a great man, but there will be others, dear. Maybe we should write the whole Richard Black incident down in your lessons learned book. Two years later, Jill had recovered from her broken heart to the point where she only thought about Richard before going to bed. Every time she remembered her humiliation, she felt uneasy because the family and friends who came to the resort drank the all-inclusive alcohol tirelessly. Everyone was pretending to have a great time. The experience of a holiday at the famous resort was ideal in one sense for several of her friends and relatives, because they had the opportunity to have an affair with an unknown partner all expenses paid. Jill now spent her days working 18-hour days as she grew wiser and bought her first apartment home as the first step in starting her own business. She still managed two buildings for Sunrise as her day job. She simply did not have time for her personal life, since her daily tasks included collecting debts from tenants who left without paying, collection of payments for damage to apartments and eviction procedures. All this happened against the backdrop of leadership who oversaw routine operations and maintenance. As luck would have it, Barbara Holman, who was supposed to be her maid of honor, walked into Jill's sunrise office and said, Hey friend, surprise. Jill jumped up and the two ladies hugged each other and said hello for a few minutes while telling each other what each other was doing. Finally, Barbara said, I just received a monetary settlement from my ex-second husband and sold the estate for my late grandmother's house, plus some previous earnings I had accumulated. You need to invest somewhere to get at least a 5% return on investment. Any ideas? Well, if you want to be my silent partner and do business with me, I have a few ideas. Firstly, you and I together do not have enough money to buy land and build a residential building, but we can still earn a little money and a 5% ROI is possible even in our screwed-up world and higher returns after the first year. Barbara said, I'm all ears. Those people who are moving into the apartments that are sprouting up across the city are leaving their big houses to downsize, and they need off-site storage space. We could buy one or two public warehouses together Dad would guarantee us and go to the ground floor. Jokingly, Barbara asked, You sold me. Where should I sign? Assuming you're serious, you'll need to lean forward so Daddy's lawyer can see your exposed breasts and implicitly promise him a hot night, and he'll enter into a pro bono partnership with us. I would insist, Barbara, on the role of managing partner, so if you want to make some money, stretch your legs as a lawyer and be my silent partner, then 5% Roy is a conservative estimate of your income after the first year. The women discussed the current market situation and noted what warehouse space was available for sale, each is investment, and the end result was a 5 e 248 limited partnership with 4% to the attorney as fees and dispute resolution. They shook hands and Barbara asked, I hope your lawyer has a big one in his pants.
because my husband found out I slept with Richard Black's manager on Newberry Street, Jerry Mason who cut my hair for three years. I'm tired of my dildo, because none of the men satisfy me now. Plus, I'm tired of fighting off toothless sharks who want to satisfy me with their tools. Ugh. The two childhood friends burst out laughing and now completely relaxed in each other's company. Jokingly, Mrs. Parkman raised her hand in a mock religious gesture and made a cross and said, Bless you, my child, but you sure wouldn't want to walk a mile in my shoes. You look like you've got it all together, Jill. Men line up to even say hello to a rich, single lady who's not yet thirty. Why do you keep repeating that? Yeah, Barb, once a week I fondle myself with a small dildo and reminisce about some of the exciting moments Richard and I once had. In my 18-hour workdays, I don't have the luxury of finding someone to seduce and then retire with him, Barb said. Still, there are plenty of men out there, although progressive education has in many ways shredded the brains to the point where the capacity for discretion has almost died out among our generation. But with that being said, are you going to love dildos for the rest of your life, Jill? What exactly are you planning for the future? Yes, Barb, you are right, and this is the problem you voiced on my list of tasks that I am nervously trying to solve as I approach 30. So if you meet a goal-oriented achiever, tell him that you know a beautiful woman who he would like to meet and who desperately wants to meet him. Barb stood up to leave and walked around the table to hug her best friend in the entire world and said, Hell no, I won't. If such a man exists, he's mine and you won't even know about him. Oh, I forgot to tell you, according to my ex-hairdresser lover, your Richard is still wandering around lost without you, but he is working hard and now has 41 stores. Jill, you have become exactly the same as your ex. Work, work, work. At the same time, focused on your goals, you forget to enjoy life along the way. You're completely wrong, friend. Mostly I only meet idiots along the way. Richard was the only flower I smelled, but I didn't make the cut. But thanks for the compliment about my work, Barbara. While Barb and Jill's visit continued, Richard Black was at the Gentleman's Club, otherwise known as a place with expensive exotic dancers. This club sometimes invited certain ladies who were known to be approachable to recruit clients from among the patrons in a quiet location. He finished his work and watched the dancing, enjoying a drink and snacks fighting off hints of sexual favors. He chose to wait here rather than at the airport and was scheduled to catch a 9.30 a.m. flight to Boston. About an hour before he was supposed to take an Uber to LaGuardia, he was approached by a strikingly beautiful but older lady who spoke to him in her native French. She completely captured Richard's attention. Answering her in his rusty French, he said, Have a seat, miss. I'll treat you to a drink for the pleasure of talking with you have you had dinner. The surprised, approachable girl looked at the gentleman and said, No, sir. I'm not interested in spending the night with you, but I offered to buy a couple of hours of your time and a sandwich in Delhi so I can practice my French. Interested? They agreed on a price and set off for the nearest Delhi. As they walked out, Monique's co-workers were jealous that the aging, approachable girl had managed to land a client early in the evening. As plates of sandwiches were placed in front of them, Monique asked in French, What are we going to talk about? Richard replied, About love, but long before you started selling your body to gentlemen. She replied, The usual story, there was a man I was very much in love with in my small town in Alsace near Strasbourg. I worked as a shop assistant, but after two years of dating, he first cheated on me and then left for another woman. I was devastated and moved to Strasbourg, where I found another sales job and then met an American. We fell in love, got married, I moved here as his wife, and we had five good years. But over time, the gynecologist told me that I could not have children. Will be, and I knew that my husband was having affairs, having lost interest in me. He asked for a divorce, and I agreed, despite my reluctance, and he pays me a pretty decent amount of alimony. But now I seduce certain gentlemen to supplement my income, 
Never before have I met someone like you who showed genuine interest in me personally, although this is just to practice your French. Today is my day, Mr. Richard said. Hum, I've only been in love once and I still suffer from it. Strange as it may seem, I still love her and she is said to love me too. But why, Mr. Black? And why aren't you and her together if that's the case? Richard finished his sandwich and beer and spent about 15 minutes telling her the whole story while she ate her food. He finished by saying, The pleasure Jill gave to a dancer at her bachelorette party was the last straw, but not the reason I called off the wedding. We are two different people. I started with the intention of learning a craft. My parents raised money to give me debt and I pursued my dream alone while she relaxed, spent daddy's money, and worked an easy job at daddy's company. We are two different people. As the couple was in an Uber heading to LaGuardia, the girl asked, Still, you guys had two great years together, why and how? She wanted to get married to please her mom and dad in the sense of giving them a grandchild. But honestly, I admired her father's ability to organize things. But personally, I didn't want to be drawn into their web and selfishly wanted Jill more for myself didn't want to marry a dozen people. But I gave in, and the two of us living together set the date for the event a year after our first year of marriage. But I became increasingly anxious as our celebration approached, because my judgment was that we were getting married for the wrong reasons and we were completely different people. So I hired a private investigator to attend her bachelorette party. She did so and provided me with video evidence of what Jill did at her drunken party, and I cancelled the wedding reception as the last straw. As the Uber pulled into their terminal, his companion asked, What about the future, Mr. Black? The two said goodbye to each other, and he squeezed her hand warmly. As Richard was getting out of the Uber car, and the driver was taking his suitcase out of the trunk, Monica's client said, I would marry Jill tomorrow if only I could see that the rumors about her foro changes over the past two years were true. He watched as she smiled and waved goodbye to him while Monica remained seated in the back seat. Turning to the driver, he said, Your dispatcher directed you back to where you picked us up, right? Yes, sir, and thank you, he said, pocketing a dollar twenty bill. A year later, Jill and Barbara, now both thirty, were inspecting their second acquisition, the Ez store, and their manager was with them. The repair contractor also walked with them, going over each punch list item to ensure that all previously noted problems were now corrected. Suddenly, they came across hundreds of small USPs packages neatly folded for shipping. Jill asked her manager, Black shipping agents, who are they? The Ez store manager, now working for the two ladies, responded, they rent 400 square feet in one set of six by 10 foot spaces and have a shared employee who comes in briefly to restock and ship cosmetic products. After Jill signed the general contractor's paperwork, they went to the manager's office. Barbara asked, who are the black shipping agents? He displayed, Richard Black Enterprises. Most of their product shipments come via international DHL cargo from France. They then shipped the products to many locations. Jill froze and could not answer. Barbara said goodbye to the Ez store manager, and the two ladies drove to Jill's office. Along the way, Barbara said, Your Richard is a really busy man. Not only is he opening new stores, but he now has a consignment warehouse run by just one full-time employee talk about low overhead. Jill responded, I wonder if Richard would kick me out if I personally came and thanked him for his business. Barbara said, he would either do it, take his business elsewhere, or throw you on the floor and make love until they both collapse from exhaustion. Think about it, Jill. His only problem with you was that your life was relaxed while he, in turn, worked hard to grow his business. Yes, you once held a fictitious position that Mr. Parkman created for you, I know. But the game has now changed. You're a desirable woman on your own right now, a friend. If it were me, I'd pursue Richard until I came back into his life or until I got a restraining order. One of two things. I'm willing to bet you're the one. 
the woman he's looking for at this stage of his life, and he's definitely the man you desperately need at this stage of your life. Hmm, yes, I'll think about it, girlfriend. Richard Black was chatting with three of his four regional managers while he ate a less than delicious delivery meal, sitting alone in his apartment early that evening. He felt alone on the planet and even turned on the cable TV and watched a couple of episodes of comedy shows where the girls were sexy and attractive, although he turned off the sound, because in his experience, as the girls became more beautiful, the plots became more and more banal. Tired of this, Richard turned on his electronic keyboard and played simple tunes over and over again that he first began playing in elementary school. At such moments, when he felt completely alone, he always promised himself, at some point I will slow down enough to return to my piano lessons. I will have a companion who will support me, and laughter will dominate my home. He stopped playing and straightened up. Making a promise to himself, he said, after I get the stores up and running in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, with four or five stores, then I'll stop and... He thought for a moment, imagining Jill Parkman dressed as a star doll. Stopping the movement, a smile stretched across his face because she was wearing the dress he recommended and fully made up like a doll. He almost fainted, remembering Jill saying, Richard, you should stop and smell the roses. Yes, Jill was right, and enjoying life is my new goal as soon as... Then he had an idea. Black shaved with an electric razor and climbed nine floors to take the first step towards reconnecting with Jill Parkman. He rang the building manager's doorbell and Jill's voice came on the answering machine. My office hours are 9.00 to 16.00. Please come tomorrow unless you want to report an emergency. He knocked on her door and said, Jill, this is Richard Black, and I have a near emergency. Can we talk? He heard the chains being released and the door swung open. Jill, in disbelief, asked, Richard, can I come in? She replied, I'm not dressed to receive you, the man I think about every day, but come in and relax in my living room while I freshen up a little. He smiled when he noticed that she was wearing thick horn-rimmed glasses and her hair was a mess. She looked at him through her glasses, but was able to smile from the joy of his visit, even under such strange circumstances. When she returned from the bedroom and bathroom, already looking like the beautiful woman he remembered, she simply smiled at him as if she were speechless. She sat down at her desk, which had two monitors and a variety of other equipment, and focused her eyes on him standing in front of her desk. Richard said, In one sense, Jill, I'm here on business, but I wanted to see you, so I came up nine floors here for exercise and decided to take a chance, hoping that you would accept me. There was a pause, as Richard suddenly didn't know what to say next. She took the initiative and said, The last time we were in the same room seems like just yesterday. I'm really glad you came. Please do it again and more often. Richard finally said, Um, my neighbor said he signed a lease for a small office on the second floor of this building where Sunrise is currently building. I'm looking for a small office too. Would you like to show it to me it? She sat back in her chair disappointed that Richard had come to her on business something she told herself, he could do online he's dying to see me as much as I want to see him, and he doesn't know how to say hello to me. Trying to think of something else to say, she continued, well, the retail area on the second floor wasn't a good idea by the previous owners for this part of town, so I talked my dad into turning the space into offices. Since Richard didn't join the conversation, she continued, Barbara, who was supposed to be my maid of honor, you remember, and I are now in business together, and will probably start an administrative support firm in this space, and... He interrupted her and said, nervously, I need administrative help. That consignment warehouse I was planning on, if you remember, is now operational, and two other companies in the beauty and health industry now want me to be their purchasing agent and shipping their products. So, I need help. Jill relaxed and said, Yes, I know, Black Shipping rents warehouse space from Barbara and me. She noticed that her former lover was amazed and continued, Let's go down to the second floor, 
where the contractor is erecting a building. You can choose where your office will be. He stood up to follow her, admiring her perfect figure from behind, but once in the elevator, he unconsciously took her hand and she returned the squeeze with a squeeze, and for the first time, the two former lovers remained focused on each other. However, both remained silent, unable to bring themselves to speak. On the second floor, she held his hand tightly and said, Here's 300 square feet in two rooms, right next to the elevator, and the restrooms are 20 yards down the hall. You'll be happy with the estimated price of construction. He finally let go of her hand and was able to say, Sold. Jill thought, It's now or never, girl. She said, Now that our business is done, let's go out to dinner and talk about us. It's obvious that the two of us feel comfortable together again, even after just a few minutes, even now that I look like Witch Hazel. Inexplicably, the tense hairdresser relaxed. Richard gently placed the back of his hand on her cheek and caressed her face, saying, Thank you, let's do that. Can I knock on your office door in thirty minutes? Yes. Richard showered, shaved and put on stylish trousers and a sweater. At the appointed time, he rang her doorbell, this time using the elevator. She quickly opened the door and said, Please come in. You are two years late. After some exchange of greetings, she continued, Come in, my dear long-lost man, and let me show you the apartment. The living area was immaculate, even the wine glasses adorning the lighted sideboard along with the glass cabinetry sparkled. But it was a shock to see Jill, because she was now charming unlike the stressed-out workaholic just a short while ago. After the tour, the two simply stopped and stared at each other. Richard broke the silence and said, Jill, I have no appetite. In fact, I just want to hug you again. She interrupted him by rushing towards him to hug the man she never stopped loving and holding him close to her body. They kissed passionately and, two hours and thirty-seven minutes later, they lay naked on her richly carpeted floor, cuddling. Their clothes covered the sofa. She said, We can't go out to dinner because I refuse to let you go, Richard. If you disappeared again for two years, that would be the end of me. She pulled up her home phone with her foot and ordered delivery of two curried tuna sandwiches. She said, Now can we talk? Yes, Jill, whatever you want. She said, The seven days in St. Kitts planned on a grand scale for our wedding, but without you was the worst week of my life. I deliberately avoided my family and friends who were staying at the same resort and walked alone along the ocean as much as possible. On the flight home, I came to the conclusion, I wouldn't have married you either if your life was a passive flower bed, which mine was at that time. Richard said, It was an unusually harsh judgment of self. What exactly caused it? She thought for a few seconds and hugged him tighter, saying, I pleasured a dancer at my bachelorette party. It was only for a moment, and my guilt paralyzed my mind. I haven't been able to fully recover from that moment of passionate lust until now. Richard stood up on one elbow and smiled widely, looking into her reddened eyes. He said, The private investigator provided me with visual evidence of your moment of careless passion. But, Jill, that wasn't the reason I called off the wedding, honey. Shocked, she opened her mouth to exclaim, You, you knew, and yet here in my arms? Why? Why did you leave me at the altar and make my father waste all that money? I doubted our marriage from the moment I agreed because we were two different types of people. In a figurative sense, someone as wealthy as you were from your father's money was the opposite of me my mantra was and is to be independent, growing my business and being my own person. I even paid my father and mother back all the money they lent me to start my adult life. After a pause, Richard continued, My opinion of you began to change recently when my manager on Newberry Street told me that you and his cheating ex-wife, Barbara, had started a business and were intent on achieving independence. Jill laughed and lightly kissed Richard on the lips, saying, To be honest, the scrappy personality is a normal trait of mine and has been since school in Switzerland. 
but the high status of the fashionable and beautiful environment at my prestigious alma mater was a temporary distraction. My attention, so I have a question for you. Why are you sure that the stylish, tyrannical Jill inside me won't appear again? Richard replied, Sure is the wrong word, I think. Your business and responsibilities as a mother after you become a mother will make it much less likely that you will go back to the Jill you were in college and lived with. She asked in surprise, A child? I feel like the only reason you even agreed to our original marriage plans was because you wanted to be a father and raise our child. Is that true? He replied, Yes, although I knew divorce and cheating would be in the future of our marriage if I had gone to the planned ceremony. I don't feel that way now because you've changed a lot and my goal is to make Jill want to be with me. Exceptionally more and more every day. The likelihood of Jill going back to college Jill is becoming extremely unlikely. After the two had freshened up, they heated up the food that had been delivered earlier and sat down to eat. I have a proposal, Richard said and continued. Let's get back together to make sure we can be happy in our new together. If this works, let's sign a prenuptial agreement that will divide our assets, fly to Mexico and get married, have a baby, and then come home and announce our three lives to friends and family. She cried, Baby, how did you know that the more success I've had in business and life since you refused to marry me, the more I wanted your baby? Richard said, Let's face the facts. The main reason you wanted to get married back then was because your mom wanted a grandchild. This time, you and I will be the only ones making the decisions. In the following weeks, she kept her apartment and office at Sunrise Properties, although she began quietly spending time with Richard in his apartment. She ate and slept nine floors below, in Richard's apartment. Only Barbara knew that the two lovers were back together, and she swore to keep their secret. Three months later, Richard bought three hair salons in the Tyson's Corner area and found a good manager, whom he trained to turn them into Richard Black Coiffure stores with the now legendary Instant Beauty, where customers became his best advertisement. As the holiday season approached, Richard, whose presence was a pleasant surprise for everyone, attended a lavish dinner at the Parkman home with Jill. Unbeknownst to their hosts, their presence was after Richard and Jill secretly got married and Jill became pregnant in Mexico. The two arrived at the main annual gala dinner at the Parkman's luxurious home, to the surprise of everyone. More than a dozen family members, in addition to many children, gathered. The couple stood up and Jill said, Hey everyone, I have an announcement. There was silence and Jill continued, Richard and I are married and the pregnancy test shows that I'm pregnant. Applause erupted and Mr. and Mrs. Parkman visibly cried with happiness. Life is good. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.